you guys do things in the training people to work on electric vehicle charging stations and infrastructure, correct? So 20% of all non-Tesla charging attempts in the U.S. result in the inability to actually charge a car. A huge number of people are needed for servicing charging. Do you, do you have an idea what that number is? We are going to need 80,000 electricians. What kind of level of income of jobs would you expect those to be for the non-electricians? Think about this. The value of that charger that's going down, the losses to the, the owner uh, or the host, what they would pay for someone to come and actually fix it. Hi, I'm David from EV World News. Excited today to have a special guest with me. I have Rue Phillips from Skill Fusion. Uh, Rue, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, David. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, it's always uh, fun to have guests. So my understanding from looking at Skill Fusion website is you guys do things in the training people to work on electric vehicle charging stations and infrastructure, correct? Correct. Uh, Skill Fusion is it's a software company, a digital platform, and we address the critical components in our EV industry, like the shortage of labor. What we're doing is creating a forum, a database of ready-to-work individuals that have a variation of skill sets uh, to to I mean, actually address one of the big problems that, that we've got right now. So I want you to tell me a little bit about your, your certification. It looks like you have programs for both electricians and non-electricians. That's correct. So, you know, when a, charger, a charging station goes down, uh, one of the major co causes for, for problems is communications and networking. Now, now presently, uh, the, you know, the, everyone thinks that you have to have 8,000 hours, uh, four years of, of training to be a journeyman electrician before you can send someone out there uh, to flip a breaker or, or the, to, to fix a communication problem on the ED charger. So what Skill Fusion has done, we address a variation of skill sets. So you send the right guy for the right job when when things go down on a on a station or an EDSC. Well, you know, one of the big things that I tell people all the time, they're looking at they're thinking about getting their first E V and I generally tell them, look, you really can't go wrong getting a Tesla because you won't have the disappointment that everybody else faces when they go charge their car. And you and I both know what that is. It's 20% of all non-Tesla charging attempts in the U.S. result in the inability to actually charge a car. And in, and in some parts of the country, it's really bad. I think it's mainly in South Florida, where it's like 33%. And then there's some places that are really good in the Midwest. But I think in the Midwest, maybe people aren't tearing up the chargers. Yeah. So this, this is the big thing is I don't know that people who don't own an EV. This is, it's, it's kind of funny because I hear all these arguments, all the catch on fire lists. Like, you know, if you really knew what was up, it's the fact that churches fail all the time. So it, it's, it's an interesting point. I saw an estimate. Uh, I can't remember what the number was, but it was a huge number of people are needed for servicing charges. Do you, do you have an idea what that number is? 80,000 per year. We are going to need 80,000 electricians in order to meet the forecasted 2030 milestones. What about the non-electricians? Non-electricians, uh, that's where Skill Fusion is going to be coming in for the operations and maintenance. You just mentioned the 25% of uh, chance when you pull up to a charging station, the 25% uh, is not going to be working. Uh, a lot of that is because there's no operations, maintenance, and service repair protocols set in place. Everybody wants to go and install these charging stations and, and make money in the process, but very few people are looking at that afterlife uh, of the, the system. Like you said, Bill Bill was uh, is, is probably privy to a lot of the legacy stations that have been out there since the, the you know the the early two thousands that that are not working. Um, yes, we've got a lot of work to do to train, change the strategy on on how we maintain them once they've been installed, David. 
So what what do you think the opportunities are for non-electricians in this space? So if they go through the certification, what do you think the opportunity is for them? Oh, it's going to be fantastic. It, it really is. Uh, as far as being able to uh, sign on to uh, uh, work-ready uh, digital platforms like ours, like a Uber S model, where these smart devices talk to the cloud, and they're going to say, uh, "I have problem X Y twenty four Z," which means a uh, 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 you know the change of the RFID uh, cards uh, inside the unit or flip a breaker or change the antenna or the, the you know a number of things where non electricians are going to be required to do, go out there. They'll know before they go of which skill set is going to be required. That's where skill fusion we come in with our micro press. It's kind of like a DNA matching. When someone wants to come into the the, the EV world, so to speak, and they say, I, I, I don't want to be an electrician, but I do want to be able to service the infrastructure. Kind of like the geek spot. What kind of level of income of jobs would you expect those to be for the non-electricians? I think it varies, uh, uh, you know, obviously from state to state, we've looked at, uh, even if you're a qualified electrician, uh, you know, uh, I hear the numbers uh, of six-figure numbers where a journeyman electrician are earning money. But uh, yeah, the, the, the data is going to vary on that, David, but it's a, it's a healthy standard of living, it really is. Think about this, the value of that charger that's going down, the losses to the, the owner uh, or the host, what they would pay for someone to come and actually fix it. And also, let's look at the 97% uptime guarantees which have been implemented. Uh, are you familiar with that, David? I have not, but that's interesting because I know like with Tesla, they have less than a 2% fail rate when people go to charge, okay? But everybody else... This is a different universe. This ninety-seven percent thing. Who's implementing this? Is this is this an attempted legislation, or this just like uh, some of the companies are trying to put up a guarantee? What, what, how is that working? It's it's a federal legislation that basically says if you want to access this funding, then your infrastructure has to be at ninety-seven percent availability. As you said, Tesla is up there at 98. I was doing solar back in the day when I morphed from EVs to, to, to solar, which is a, another story. Who killed the electric car here in California? Uh, but in, in solar, we were up in the 99% availability. So uh, again, you know, smart technology. So yeah, it's we are going to be seeing some changes. How they police that? Uh, that's going to be a tough one. Um, yeah, but uh, they're already, um, it's implemented within the budgets. Uh, and also operations and maintenance, when I spoke about, is that's being mentioned also in the bills. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. If you like this video, then please press the like button. If you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles, then please hit the subscribe button. If you have some feedback for us, please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.